power, but most nascent we found is not really nascent. This is what I call true nation iodine. Infowarslife.com or infowarsstore.com. And it really is essential that you try it. Bottom line, you're helping the broadcast, you're funding the operation, but you can read the rave reviews. It has a 4.9 review. The overall products have a 4.8, thousands of them. Uh, look, the first review is 4.8. Uh, 840 reviews of the nascent iodine alone, thousands and thousands on the site itself by a major third party site. Power Reviews, one of the most respected out there. Uh, Texas Stevo in Austin, Texas. I bought five of the old survival shields that InfoWars first sold. And I have to say, the first bottles were good, but over time, the color and taste faded, and the others, the six months or older. The new X2s are way, way better. You can sure tell it's full of iodine, tastes much stronger so far, has not faded a bit. So I talk about, about half of what AJ recommends. I also recommend doing the liver cleanse. First, the deep cleanse. You will feel fantastic afterwards. Now, that's just the first review. I didn't even look at it before I read it. Five stars. Infowarslife.com. And most of the reviews we can't allow, and we block them ourselves because of the claims people are making. Uh, it's, it's just too dramatic. X2, super male, super female, colloidal silver, 50% off right now when you buy two bottles. Buy two bottles, get two free. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. We'll talk to these callers and more and have our guest in studio straight ahead. But bottom line, the new offensive is being launched. They're coming after our We're guns. We're on the march. This is live three hours of radio slash TV uh, to counter the establishment media. And we didn't have any train wrecks today. Our crew does a great job compared to folks getting shot, obviously, uh, in Virginia. Very tragic. I'm very sad for their two deaths. Uh, the video, first-person point of view shooting uh, by a deranged, apparently racist black guy, very similar to the shooting situation uh, that happened in Charleston, except that was even more cold-blooded because the young man in question didn't know eight of the nine people he shot. But it's this whole race war where the problems in our life are people of other colors, not the economic policies, not what's actually happening in the world. Julia Turiansky, uh is a very interesting documentary filmmaker, radio, TV host, uh, BraveTheWorld.com. We've been covering her stuff for years. You know, as Paul Watson's interviewed her uh, quite a bit. She's been here in Austin the last week. And so I thought, well, why not have her in studio to talk about feminism and some of the topics that are taking place. But now we have this big mass shooting that's happened. I promised to go to your calls, but now they're about five minutes behind. I'm going to have to do a little bit of overdrive uh, to be able to finish those. So we'll, we'll do that as well for Doug and others that have been patiently holding. Again, I'm Alex Jones, your host. There is a big push to demonize the Second Amendment. There is a big push, obviously, to demonize people being able to defend themselves. Julia, what do you want to tackle first? I mean, there's a lot of issues, a lot of news. You cover a lot of different angles. You, you try to get uh, off of the uh, paradigm and you know get off the left-right uh, reservation. Where do you see the world going? Well, I just came from San Francisco to Austin, which has been a really incredible culture shock in a, kind of a positive direction. And as you mentioned, San Francisco has this incredible homelessness problem. And it's just an example of how governments compound and augment problems that they claim to, to have been fixing. So what happens in San Francisco specifically is... They ship, places like New York give homeless people a one-way ticket to a bus and ship them to a warmer place like San Francisco. And they all go there because San Francisco spends $167 million a year on their homeless. But then they take away basic services like public toilets because of the fear of drug use in confined uh, private spaces. So they ship all the homeless there. They make the illusion of providing services and taking care of them, and then they take away public toilets. And then you get what you get. <laughs> Drudge has the image. It's an epidemic of people defecating on the streets. It is. I've been there. I've seen it. <laughs> I mean, the last few terrible. times I went to San Francisco, it's really creepy now. It looks like a zombie apocalypse with just bombed out of their brain or mentally ill homeless people wandering around everywhere. 
basically crapping on themselves. And I guess this is the liberal heaven. Yeah, and the entirety of California. I mean, I, I, I can't speak for each individual, but they're all hypocrites. You look at, uh, they're all uh, claiming to be anti-racist, but they they totally back Planned Parenthood, which is a anti-black eugenist, uh, eugenist program. Originally, uh, you can look that up, Margaret, uh, Margaret Sanger, and it's out there, it's not even conspiracy theory. They claim to be tolerant, but if you disagree with them, they just get infuriated, start yelling at you. They claim to be feminists, yet they don't support gun rights. And gun rights and gun ownership is actually congruent with, with feminism. And I think gun ownership is actually a contingent of true equality, not sameness. But Absolutely. Why does government and rich people and elites get to have guns and bodyguards, but then mm -hmm. we don't individually get to have them? That's just outrageous. And how mm -hmm. dare Hillary with all these armed guards say that you or I can't have guns. Now yeah. tell folks a little bit about yourself because we Google your name. We can see you there posing with guns and, and, and that's always exciting to see <laughs> folks doing that. I mean, it's just so no-brainer. If you want to empower women who, on average, aren't as physically strong as men and historically get preyed on by bad men, why the first thing you do is try to get women in MMA and get women armed. But well, no, no, the left doesn't want that. They want the state to be the woman's pimp. Yeah, Alex, they run all these anti-rape campaigns and vilify men and think there's a, you know, one out of every three men are, is a rapist. And then they take your guns away. As a woman, I'm like 120 pounds. If I'm at home alone, especially with my little kids or my family, you know, people who are dependent on me for protection and someone breaks into my home, I am almost, I'm very likely to be less physically um, uh, able to protect myself than a man, than a grown man. Uh, most men can physically take me. I need a gun to equalize me. I need it because if I don't, even if he has a gun, at least we're on an even playing field. At Guns least. are an incredible liberator. Right. And people don't understand that. And to me, the whole gun debate is over. You can print a gun. You can, you, even before you could print a gun, you can just make a gun at home. This is why. Uh, places like D.C. have the highest gun crime because they get guns illegally anyways. Sure. Let me ask you this. Why do you think, because the statistics show this, that the gun culture, not just here but worldwide, is so popular and people don't believe the propaganda anymore, and even the left, I know, are out quietly buying guns the last six, seven years. Why do you think that's happening? I think even the progressives, when they go out there and experience life and experience the real world, they will have the state step on them in some way or another. And maybe even deep down inside on a, a dinosaur level, their dinosaur brain tells them to protect themselves. Because at some point, unless you're a total vegetable, you'll realize that nobody's going to protect you. You have to protect yourself. And I don't care how they sell it or how they wrap it up. The, at the end of the day, even the best, most uh, well-run, most funded government will not protect you. Uh, fast enough again. Yeah, where else. was the government? Where were the cops to protect these news reporters? And the message is it's not their job. They can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah, there's been cases of fires burning and people screaming and the cops standing around waiting for orders, not knowing what to do. And while meanwhile, you're funding them with your tax dollars for protection and your family burns alive or is getting murdered in your house. And that's because the cops are told you only do when you stuff when you're ordered or you'll be fired. In the past, the cops would just go in, but now it's so compartmentalized, they wait and follow their orders. Like when there's a mass shooting, the cops would sit around for hours. Oh my God. In some cases, depending on the jurisdiction, because it's their orders. So where, where, what, where's all this money going to? Where's all our tax dollars going to? You know, the state, I think what's, bec oh, what's happened now is the state is obsessed with preventing events from occurring. They, it's all about control. So they want to create the illusion of preventative measures, which is impossible because people will go crazy. There are bad people in the world and they will do bad things. You cannot prevent that. Well, what sure, there's discussions about banning tubing in Texas. They've actually discussed it because so many hundreds of ankles get broken. Well, big deal. I know going over waterfalls in an inner tube, I could break my ankle. I know my kids could get hurt. That's part of life on this planet. I mean, you don't get stronger unless you go through stuff like that. But I don't send them over white rapids, but I mean, you know, the, the, I'll go to the beach and people will say, there could be jellyfish out there. Don't let your kids go in. And there'll be like hundreds of kids playing. And I go, 
Well, I know it's not perfectly safe, but it's this weird culture. Mm -hmm. Like, I was going down to the hike and bike trail with my kids about a month ago, and it had been flooding like a week before. It was totally safe now. It wasn't even going fast. Got down there. There were people swimming and everything. Some rainstorms were blowing over. I looked on my phone, knew they were blowing over. We're going to be gone. It was raining. And this guy on a mountain bike goes, hey, you going down there with those kids? It's flooding. It's not safe. Storms are coming. And I didn't even say anything. I didn't say, hey, I looked on my phone beforehand. It's safe. Hey, it's about to get sunny, which it did five minutes later. I mean, the, I mean, the radar tells the truth. I just ignored the guy. I didn't even say, hey, mind your business. But, I mean, it's a nanny Very state. Awesome of you. <laughs> it's sick, though. What do you make of that? Well, you know, we live in a world of um, systematic surveillance, uh, aerial strikes, ground drills. Uh, every, everything is watched. Everything is attempted to be controlled. And the worst, the resulting um, thing that happens is society becomes very placid and jellyfish like. So now instead Stagnant. of. Stagnant. Yeah, they, and soft too, because now instead of people confronting their issues with others they call the police or they call a service or they you know they go my hamburger's not yeah. hot i'm calling the police yeah and there's this uh, there's this apotheosis of the state and we think they're god but if the state is god then it's a sacrificial god and we're the people who are being sacrificed to it because if you call a higher authority which is the state's now higher power to most people then you are not an individual anymore. You are relying on somebody else. It's like if you're a 40-year-old man and you still call your mommy for to make you lunch. It, I mean, it's just that on an extreme Well, now level. they're saying children, dreamers, are up to age 30. And they're saying yeah. that's the new, you become a man or a woman yeah. at 30. And that stemmed from making child, um, child work illegal, right? What was the point of making uh, children under certain age illegal to work? It was to keep them children until they were like 25. I was about to say, there were certainly abuses covered in, in the jungle and other publications mm -hmm. that the Rockefellers were doing. But now they want to ban your kids taking the trash out or getting eggs out of a chicken right. coop. And they admit that is so they're a bunch of babbling idiots and aren't confident. When in truth, what you did in the old days is you apprenticed your sons mainly, but daughters as well, into really rough situations you empower them that way. My dad apprenticed in basically everything. Mm -hmm. By the time he was like 16, I mean, I was sent to do apprentice stuff. I didn't know how important and, that was. And there's no men left now, Alex. Like women like me, we're all the men. Men can't, they can't build anything. They can't fix anything. They have to call somebody for anything that needs to be done. And my father comes from that same generation. He grew up in the Soviet Union. You can't call anybody. You got to do everything by yourself. And in a system like that, you have to use black markets. And now it's like, Oh, the toilet breaks. I have to pay someone because I don't have a license to do this. So it's the t and it's a deterioration of everybody. And I mean, I'm going to skip this break because we're low on time. And I came in a few minutes late. I apologize for that. Should have told you guys that. Absolutely. Let's take some calls and we'll do some overdrive into the next hour. That'd be great. So we have more time to flesh all this out. We have our guest joining us here from Toronto, Canada. So I was up in Toronto. Yeah, and I came to Austin to give a speech. <laughs> and then you were down here. And I'm, I remember first seeing you reporting with Paul Watson about three years ago in Copenhagen at Bilderberg. And I've seen some of you guys joint work. So it's good to have you here joining us. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Doug uh, in Minnesota. Thank you for holding, Doug. You're a real trooper. Go ahead. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good, brother. See, you know, it's a terrible thing what happened, you know, at that news station. But it, what's even a worse thing is all the cemeteries that we filled with our soldiers and our police that have fought for the freedoms and the rights of people in this country. And it appears as though a lot of people are forgetting about that. They're forgetting how we got to this point. And they're so willing to just give it up and throw it away. You know, and I'm, I'm for taking the guns away, but not from the people. I'm for taking it away from Al-Qaeda, ISIS, ISIL, Gissel, whatever they want to call it today, and they're funding the people that they're letting in the country. Now, we're supposed to give our guns up while they're giving guns to people and having them come in the country? You know, I, I look at it as that's the military that Obama was talking about. Sure, he talks military. about a domestic security force just as big, just as strong as our military, and that is his Akern Youth Brigade's classic, you know, Mussolini-style garbage. Uh, by the way, now they're reporting that 
Vester had Vester Flanagan had a manifesto. So we're going to go into overdrive in the next hour. Continue your calls and break.